Hello and welcome to this online tutorial for Apperson Data Link Connect software. We commonly refer to this machine as the Scantron machine. Now typically we have used this machine in conjunction with Scantron forms to collect test scores. However, with this Data Link Connect software, I'm going to show you how to utilize this device as a very useful method for analyzing your tests, your student test data, um, and also pulling other reports. So I'm using a version of Windows that's slightly different than what we use at school. This is Windows 8, um, but you'll notice that the desktop will look very similar to the Windows 7 environment that you have at work. So you'll notice this icon here at the bottom. This is typically what your Data Link Connect software icon will look like on the desktop. So as you select this, it will pull up the Data Link Connect software. Now I'm going to go ahead and maximize so I can show you some different items on this software. You'll notice, of course, at the top you have your options of File, Edit, Session, Scanner, and Help. We will look into those in just a moment. You will also have your main row here of test scoring, data collection, Excel import, key, um, and others, gradebook, export, and reports. We're going to use a handful of those today. Just below all of that information is the actual test data location where it will upload your scores to. And you'll also notice at the very bottom, this is the connection point that shows you that the Scantron machine, in our instance, the Grademaster 600, is actually connected and functioning properly. So you can see that all at the bottom. Um, We'll leave it on test scoring. That's what we want. We do not want data collection because our purpose for this session is actually the scoring of tests. So I have a couple of different options with how I can actually load my key into the software. The first is our typical method for scanning keys and that's running it through the Scantron machine. Um, so of course I can run it through um, but for our intents and purposes I have already done that and I wanted to show you something a little different, you can actually save your keys over a period of time and you can reuse them, which is very nice if you're like me and you tend to lose things. So you can select File, Load Key, and I actually have it saved to my desktop, American West Euro Invasion Test 2014. I'll select that and I'll open it. And you'll notice that it will pull in and it actually the first um, question that will ask me is how many sides on the Scantron. This is a one-sided Scantron or at least I used one side of the Scantron and now it will load my 20 test question answers in. Now a couple of things of note about this you'll notice that where it says student's name this is the key it's out of 20 and then it also goes through questions. Question 1 the answer is A so on and so forth. Now, I'll show you this later, but you can actually change and remove the scores right from this very location here. Okay, so now that our key's loaded in, I'm going to go ahead and enter my student data by scanning my Scantrons through the machine. And you'll notice as I do this, it will populate the student test data in the software. So, for some reason, it's saying that all of my students' names are Todd Jones. I can, of course, change that, but it's not really important for our intents and purposes. So I have a lot of Todd Jones. Hopefully he's a really nice kid. You'll also notice the location, the column that says ID number, and they're all blank IDs. We do not have the Scantron forms that allow us to collect ID numbers. You'll see the percentage that students have scored in the next column to the right. To the right of that, you'll also see their score out of 20 total questions. It also gives you a column that shows how many blank answers there were. So I'm lucky none of my students left any blank. And then it goes through from left to right, question 1 through question 20. White is good. So white means that those students got the correct answer. So for example, question one, most of my students, all of my Todd Jones, except for Todd Jones number two, scored with the correct answer of letter A. However, when you compare that to question 13, where there was a very large selection of students that selected C, that might be an item of concern. 
But really, when you're looking at it at this point, you want to just look to see first if there are any blanks. And then also, it will show you if there were any double selected answers. Um, for example, the Scantron machine easily picks up on erased items. And for example, where it might say a B here under question 12, row 2, it might also have like a D next to it if the student had erased a previous answer. So that's something that you just want to check for. Um, something else that you can also do is if, oh, you check the, the test and you're like, wow, this answer was actually C, it wasn't B. You can actually go back in, change this over to C by selecting that column. I literally selected it with a left click. I changed it to a C, and now once I exit out of that, you'll notice that it changes the answer. And so now B is the incorrect answer, and it actually also changed the student's scores as well. So it will actually auto-populate that information for you, which is a very, very neat feature of this as well. Um, you'll notice here at the top now, this is where we're going to really get the heart of our information, our item analysis reports. Now, we're hoping in the future that you will actually be able to connect this to the Tyler Sys system. Right now, it's not one of the grade books that you can actually export directly to. So we select reports. Now reports, there are lots of different reports that you can select from the basic reports that you can pull up and save in PDF format to the ones that will automatically export to Excel format. Now for our intents and purposes, our best report is the item analysis report. So I went ahead and selected item analysis with a left click and now you'll notice it gives you a small snapshot of the screen that you are about to see. Now there are two things that you can actually do with this. One is you can save this directly to a PDF file. It'll export it to a PDF where you can then pull it up in a full screen format and you can analyze the data. The second option is that you can directly print it to an, a hooked up printer. For our purposes, we're going to select PDF. I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm just going to save it as item analysis. And I already actually had an item analysis, so it'll overwrite that file. I will close this out. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the Data Link Connect software. And now you'll notice that I'm on my desktop. And where it says Item Analysis, I'm going to double click and open that. So it pulls up the PDF report with the Exam Item Analysis report. And you'll notice that there are lots of bits of information at the top. For example, you have the instructor's name and the exam name, which is blank. It gives you the date. It gives you the total possible points, it gives you my highest score, 18 out of 20, a 90%, and it gives you the lowest score, a 9 out of 20, or a 45%. It gives you a class average, the average score was a 15 out of 20, a 75%. It gives you the median, a 75%, and it also gives you the total number of, of tests that were ran through the machine. Now this is where the heart of the data really is here because this is going to show you how good your questions are and of course you could also add, analyze this data to see if maybe you needed to make some changes with what you were teaching. So for example with my question number one we've already looked at that one on the main screen of the Connect software but the correct answers are shown in italics, they're bolded and they're red. So they should really stand out to you compared to the black choices. So in question one, the correct response was letter A. And out of my 15 students that took it, answered that question, 14 of them got it correct, or 93.3%. Only one student selected it incorrectly at 6.7%. So that's either a super easy question, or my students mastered that particular piece of content. So that's good information right there. And you can look down in it. Really, a simple scan of this is mostly what you would need. And I typically look at anything that's over over 30 to 35 percent. So here's a 40 percenter. 60 percent of my students answered that one correctly. There were a couple of incorrect choices. Now, obviously, the one that really stands out to me is this 66.7 percent. That question 13. Only five out of my 15 students got that answer correct. So that's something that I would probably take a look at in my test, um, on my test itself to see, okay, did I word that incorrectly? Um, could there have been a confusing answer? 
or was it just something that I probably need to look at in the way that I taught that particular piece of content? So very useful software also gives you the date that this particular um, report was actually run. You can save this and you can utilize that later as well. So this is the Apperson Data Link Connect software and this was a tutorial that shows you how to score your tests using the online software and how to analyze those tests for useful data collection purposes to improve instruction and to improve student achievement. Thanks for watching.